Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to build an electric skateboard battery using a Vruzen V2 battery building kit. Now to do this battery I'm going to be using Samsung 25R cells. These are also from Vruzen.com, the same place the kit is from. And uh, these are popular cells for building electric skateboard batteries because they're fairly high power. But you can also use uh, Samsung 30Q cells, which are a little bit lower power but higher capacity, and a few other cells out there. This is just the cell that I'm going to be using. I'll also be using a configuration that's called 10S2P, which means that we're going to have 10 cells in series and 2 cells in parallel. That's going to give us a 36 volt battery and with these cells, a 5 amp hour capacity battery. Now there are two different configurations that you could use for building this type of 10S2P battery. The first configuration would look like this, where you've got 10 cells in a row, but it's two cells thick. Now I've already shown how to build multiple cell thick battery packs using the Vruzen kits. Uh, I'll put a link up here to my last video that showed how to do this, or you can just go back and check my past videos. So I'm going to show you today how to build a different orientation that's going to look like this. Now this is going to be an orientation where the cells are laying flat. We still have two rows of 10 cells, but this way they're going to sit um, up closer to the board and we're going to have more ground clearance. Now I'm going to go to the computer and plan out the cell layout and also the layout for my connections. For a 10S2P battery, I'll be grouping the cells into pairs of two and alternating their polarities. When I get to the end of the first row of 10, I'll flip over to the next row and continue in the same pattern. Next I'll plan out my series and parallel connections. Parallel connections will connect each pair of cells in parallel at both the positive and negative terminals of the pair. Then I'll add the series connections from the positive terminal of each group to the negative terminal of the next group. Notice that I'm going to add two bus bars for the connections here. This is because there's only one cell from each pair actually touching each other, so I just want to beef up that series connection by doubling up the bus bars for those connections. All right, now let's get to the actual assembly. I'll start by aligning my caps in the same orientation before I slide them together, making sure the tails are up and to the right on both of the caps, and that the sockets are down and to the left on both of the caps. Then I'll slide them together in pairs of two. Next, I'll connect those pairs together to make all four rows that I'll need for my battery layout. Once all of my rows and caps are connected and match my diagram, I can then begin inserting the cells into the caps, making sure to get the polarity correct. To compress the cells into the caps, I'll just use a block of wood or any other hard, flat object to distribute my weight over the caps. No clamps are needed with the V1.5 and later kits, as we made the caps easier to slide onto the battery cells. I can now confirm that the spring contacts are making contact with the cells by measuring the voltage of each cell via the threaded terminal post. If you can read the voltage of the cells, then you're making proper contact. Then I'll repeat the same process to make the second side of the battery. Once both sides of my battery are completed, I'm ready to place my bus bars. I'll begin with the first group of cells in the lower left on my diagram and place the parallel and then series connections. I'll then continue moving up that row of batteries, placing my parallel and series connections as indicated on my diagram. Next, I'll flip the battery row over and perform the connections on the other side. This is where you have to be careful, as the opposite side of the battery is already connected, so a wrong connection here could result in a short circuit. Then I'll complete the connections on the second half of my battery as well. Once I have both sides of my battery's series and parallel connections finished, I'll come back and do this series connection in the middle. For this connection, I'll use nickel-coated copper ring terminals that I found on AliExpress and a short length of silicone wire to make a flexible bus bar and complete the series connection, joining the packs between the fifth and sixth cell groups. Now it's time to add the BMS. Now this is just a cheap 36 volt BMS from eBay, and I normally don't like to use this model of BMS because it's just not as reliable. I normally use a beefier BMS from Vruzen.com, but of course I forgot to grab one before embarking on this build, so I'm just using one of these cheap BMSs that I already had in my good old box of parts. Now I've gone ahead and soldered on my charge and discharge wires here to the BMS, and now it's time for me to connect my balance wires. Now this specific BMS is a 10-wire BMS, so it's got 10 of these balance wires for a 10S battery. 
the other option is that you can sometimes have BMSs that have one more wire than the number of cells. So for a 10S BMS, you could have 11 wires here. If you have 11 wires, or if you have a BMS with one more wire than the number of cells, the first wire, which will usually be black, it'll be the negative wire, will connect to the negative first terminal, so the negative terminal of your entire battery, and then every wire will connect to the positive terminals. In this case, where we have 10 balance wires for a 10S battery, or an equal number of balance wires per cells in series, each of these wires is going to connect only to the positive terminals. So instead of that first black wire connecting to the first terminal's negative, it will connect to the first terminal's positive, and then each one of these will connect to the positive going all the way up to positive 10. That's the only difference between BMSs that have one more wire than the number of cells and those that have an equal number to the number of cells. Okay, now we can start connecting. I'll start by connecting the B- wire from the BMS to the minus one terminal of the entire battery pack. Then I'll connect the positive charge and discharge wires to the positive 10 terminal of the entire battery pack. Now I can add the balance wires from the BMS. Since this BMS has the same number of wires as the number of cell groups, the first wire will start with the plus one group. But if this wire had one more wire than the number of cell groups, the first wire would start with minus one. Then, regardless of the type of BMS, each successive wire will continue on each positive terminal until the last wire should end up on the last positive terminal. I also like to use non-conductive capped on tape to hold the wires down and keep everything a bit neater. Now, because we're using these batteries in a vibration heavy environment, like on a skateboard or an e-bike, we'll want to add some extra insurance and compress the caps together so they can't work their way off over time. For wider packs, you'd want to use some type of compression plates on either side. But since our pack is only one cell wide, we can use zip ties to achieve the same effect. Then I'll just hot glue the BMS to the pack with a bit of foam underneath it. And I also like to add a little hot glue to the point where each of the balance wires meets the bus bars or the caps, just to prevent them from vibrating and then weakening the wire by fatigue over time. Lastly, I'm going to add a piece of plastic that I cut off of a cutting board between the halves of the pack, just to prevent anything from being able to fall in there and bridge the gap, shorting any of the terminals. And now I've finished my electric skateboard battery pack. At this point, you could cover it using heat shrink or build an enclosure for it for your skateboard, or just leave it open for better cooling, you know, however you want to run it on your skateboard. Now, I hope you found that helpful in terms of building a uh, flat skateboard battery pack. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And speaking of the comments, time to announce the winner of last video's giveaway. And the winner is... Manny Martinez. So uh, thank you very much, Manny. I hope that I answered your question with this video. I know you were asking about a 10S 3P, but basically you'd follow the same steps and add one more cell in parallel. And uh, for anyone else that wants to win a copy of my book, all you have to do is put a comment below this video, anything you want to say, and then hopefully I will select your comment at the end of my next video. And if I do, you'll be winning a copy of one of my books, either the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, DIY Lithium Batteries, or DIY Solar Power. All right, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.